Guys, reports have emerged that this new dry electrode process, which Tesla have solved finally, could increase the energy density of 4680 cells, according to sources in China with knowledge of this matter, by 20%. If that 20% energy density improvement is realized, it would mean the 4680 battery cell would be the highest energy density battery in the world that you can, well, that's mass produced, aside from CATL's condensed battery, which is not currently available to automakers. This would mean Tesla's cost to manufacture the Cybertruck would fall substantially, potentially also increasing range by a huge amount. Well, it's about damn time. Finally, Tesla has solved the 4680 battery conundrum, the problem they've been facing with the dry cathodes. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. I'd love to see you at the EV show in Melbourne, the electric SUV show. It won't just be SUVs there, by the way. But anyway, it's going to be on on the 9th and the 10th of August here in Melbourne. And you can get cheap tickets if you click my link in the description below. I'll be speaking there, and if you'd like to come and see me speak, that'd be fantastic. Now, guys, Tesla's 4680 battery cells. Tesla's been criticized a lot about those batteries. Some of it is fair enough because Tesla did make some big claims, um, claims that they thought they could carry out, and those claims really kind of didn't quite happen. One of the biggest claims they made, well, not necessarily they made, but they didn't really make it, in fact. They bought this technology, dry cathode technology from Maxwell Technologies. They pretty much paid, what, $320 million for that company. All they wanted was the dry cathode technology. Didn't even work. I mean, it's taken Tesla years to get to the point of actually getting it to work. But finally, they've achieved that. A few weeks ago, or maybe about a month ago, there was articles in major American media publications where they said, oh, look, I think they said, oh, LG Chem has beat Tesla to dry cathodes. It was LG Chem or Panasonic or Samsung. I don't remember which one it was. I just saw the, the news and thought, this is ridiculous. I'm certain that LG Chem, Samsung and Panasonic have not yet um, been begun manufacturing batteries with dry cathodes. Anyhow, the media, they always talk nonsense. So you can't really read this stuff and think you're going to get the actual true story. What is the true story? Well, Tesla has not begun manufacturing 4680 battery cells yet with dry cathodes. They have manufactured them and they're testing those battery cells. Apparently they've been in test for about a week in a Tesla Cybertruck. This update was posted by Tesla's senior manufacturing engineer, Cole Otto, who noted on a post in LinkedIn that the company has kicked off its vehicle testing for the dry cathode Cybertruck or dry cathode 4680 battery cell Tesla Cybertruck, which is testing these batteries right now. Otto's post had a photo of the team uh, posing with this Cybertruck. It's a matte black Cybertruck. It does look good. I'm going to admit, I think the matte black is um, a good color for the Cybertruck if it works. Anyhow, what does this mean? Well, here's what they said. Introducing the first ever dry cathode Cybertruck. In July, we kicked off vehicle testing with our groundbreaking in-house dry cathode 4680 cells. Yes, we all know their 4680 batteries are in-house. This is a significant milestone in advancing both technology and cost efficiency. Proud to be part of the brilliant team that made this historic achievement possible. My feeling here, guys, is I'm a little bit subdued. I th I just think this took longer than it should have. I don't know why it would have taken so long. It's a, it took years for this to happen. But I'm, I'm glad to see this happen. This will mean these batteries will be much cheaper for Tesla to produce. That's the big difference between um, dry cathodes versus um, wet. It's just the cost of manufacturing. Really, that's what it comes down to. This wasn't the first time that a photo of Tesla's dry cathode Cybertruck though was posted online. In fact, according to, to Tesla Rati, Giga Texas watcher Joe Tegmeyer shared a number of images from a recent flyover of the facility, which showed this Cybertruck driving around. It's about a week ago, right? But I don't think anyone knew at the time that it had those batteries. Well, no one outside of Tesla anyway. Tesla Cybertrucks are being delivered right now. They have 4680 cells in them. They don't have dry cathodes in those battery cells. Does that mean that you're getting an inferior product? Not as far as I know. It just means it costs Tesla more money to manufacture those batteries. 
Apparently, there's a report from a Chinese publication Late Post. This publication said that Tesla's 4680 cells that are used in production Cybertruck units actually already come with a negative cathode that's produced using Tesla's dry electrode process and a positive cathode that is purchased from a supplier. This results in, a po in the positive cathode being produced using conventional wet electrode processes. So now Tesla don't have to purchase those positive cathodes from suppliers anymore. They can simply manufacture their own positive cathodes using this dry electrode this dry electrode process. And this will definitely reduce costs for Tesla. Would it be a massive reduction in costs? My estimate would be a rock, around about a 10 to 15% reduction in production costs. It's not huge, not a huge difference. So I think it'd be guys much more significant if Tesla was able to use more manganese in these batteries or potentially use silicon in the batteries as well. That would increase energy density. But anyway, the late post report cited people familiar with the matter saying that Tesla is looking to start mass producing complete 4680 cells um, entirely in-house. They won't have to purchase any of these parts going into the cells anymore. Negative and po positive cathodes will be produced using the company's in-house dry electrode process in consumer vehicles by the end of 2024. Once dry electrodes are developed, they can change Tesla, said this report. How can they change Tesla? Well. Honestly, aside from all the things I've mentioned here, it is possible this could increase energy density. We don't know by how much though. Um, would it be a 5% increase? I don't know. Now, obviously the price reduction is significant. It's not huge, but it's significant. But energy density, no one really knows if this will actually change the energy density or change the ability for Tesla to make some tweaks to improve the energy density. Now, there is, a, there is some sources saying that this will increase energy density of 4680 battery cells by 20%. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, and let's say Tesla continued using the 123 kilowatt hour battery packs in the Cybertruck that they currently have, but they were able to improve the energy density by 20%, the longest range Cybertruck could potentially have a range of around 400 miles. And that would be game changing. Why would that be game changing? Well, the reason is because Tesla would be able to put a battery pack in their Cybertrucks that is much smaller than the competition and get the same range, meaning their cost per vehicle would be much lower than the competition as it always has been. And Tesla therefore would maintain their significant advantage that they have when it comes to manufacturing electric cars. We'll wait and see if this is true. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.